Hello everybody, this is a Yamaha Tenere 700, my Rider Guider T7, a bike which I've had for two and a half years, I love it, it's been pretty much faultless and it is possibly one of the best bikes I've had, I think it's great, however it does have some flaws, um, well maybe one flaw, like a lot of motorbikes, having only got two wheels, it tends to fall over. Sometimes with rider input, sometimes without. When that happens, it has a propensity to, you know, possibly scratch things, bend things. And as such, I've ended up with this. I've got a bent gear lever, which is a bit of a bind, let's be honest. So what I need to do is replace it. And that's what we're gonna to do today. Now, with that in mind, coincidentally, I got contacted by these guys nice cnc and they said you've got a t7 would you like a nice cnc gear lever bloody oath absolutely right so that's the one i'm going to fit bit of a result actually so let's crack on tools i'm going to list as i go along and i'm going to start off by explaining what you might need to do to set up to do this um, if you've got a standard bash plate, you won't need to remove it because you'll need access to these two. And with a standard bash plate the T7 comes with, you can actually access these. I don't have the standard bash plate on my bike anymore. I've got the AXP and it covers a lot more than the standard plate. So I've had to remove it to access these two bolts here. So for them two bolts, we're going to use a 6mm socket. Sorry, a 6mm Allen key on a 3H drive ratchet. Now, you can also use an Allen key on its own if you wish. I'm just gonna loosen these so I can get to it, not by too much. Stick that back there. I've also got my trusty 3H drive ratchet again and a 12 mil socket. That will undo this top bolt here and then this one here and actually, one just above the spindle for the side stand. Now, while I'm discussing this, I also need to mention you need a paddock stand or a center stand. If you've got neither, you can in fact just put your bike in gear, potentially, and lean it against a wall and maybe chalk your front wheel. That way you could take this assembly off, which is what we're doing. It's not a massive job, to be perfectly honest. Next up, we're going to need an 11 millimeter open ended spanner, and then his very rare and always missing little brother, the 10 mil open ended spanner. We're going to just crack that nut off there, holding the, uh, the squared one with the 11 mil. Spin that up. Same at the top, there's a square off there, and we're going to Work out which way that spins. It's anti-clockwise if you look at it. You know, it's, I don't, well, basically it's had, is it clockwise, anti-clockwise? I don't know. But anyway, you spin that one off, spin it down the thread. And what we'll do now is basically drop this off of here. So we'll spin this. You can see the gear lever moving down until it drops out of the thread. And then we'll leave that out of the way. You can just put that out of the way if I want up here. Let's get it out of the way. We don't need that in the way at the moment. Next job is we'll move that up and we'll finish off removing all these bolts. First, I think what we'll do first is take these Allen bolts out, as I say, with the six mil Allen bolt, Allen socket. That's one, put it there. Nice and safe. Good to have a nice clean working area. Take that off there. And out she comes. Easy enough. That one's safe. Socket there. Back to the 12mm socket. I've had that since 1986. And the socket, to be fair. That is snap-on gear. From when I used to be a bit of a trader. Not anymore. You always keep your tools, especially when they snap on ones. So we're going to undo this one. Put 
one out. Two out. The bottom two are slightly different to this one. That's your top one. It's got like a little hole in the end of it. I don't know why that is. It's just a different socket, different bolt. Now at this stage, you notice I've got a box here. I'm gonna slide that forward, because you'll see why in a second. As I remove this one, I want to drop it onto there. There's a little bit of a technique for putting that back on, which I'll show you when we do reinstall it. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this, the back of the uh, gear lever there, is back to the six mil socket. That's that one. Now this one requires a little bit of leverage. And the reason I say that is because I tried it out the other day and found it was well and truly covered in Loctite. So of course, I'm gonna be using that bit of blue for the dads to reinstall it. And you'll notice on here, a spring washer there. Got to make sure we don't lose that. I think that's fine enough out to get it out with just this way now. As you can see, it's coming off now. There's a washer there that goes behind it. That'll go on there. So what we're gonna do, that is gonna be discarded. And then, we're going to look at the nice CNC replacement, which is here. Now what we're going to do is just put a little bit of grease just on there. Or on there, probably better just to put it straight onto that piece there. So I'll give that, give that a clean. That's better. You can see it's got blue Loctite on the thread there from old. So we'll be putting some new on there in a second. So with that in mind, Let's work out exactly whether or not I need to put the Loctite on first. Yeah, we're good, we're good. I just don't want to get Loctite and grease contaminating each other, otherwise it wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is just make sure I put a smidgen of grease just around there and not get it on the threads. Because otherwise that Loctite's neither use nor ornament. Right, let's get to the, to the new product. Remember there's that washer, goes on here. So we'll just do a little bit of jiggery and indeed some pokery to make sure this works. We'll hold that there. Now with that in mind, yeah, I'm gonna have to put some Loctite. I'll put it in the thread. That's the way to do it at that angle. Let's put some Loctite straight into the threads there. So that way it doesn't contaminate by the grease. Perfect. Nice, decent amount, not to be shy. Then we should be good to go. Making sure your spring wash is correct there. Right, we're good. And then we're going to run this back in. And there it is. I lost my socket there for a minute. Back the other way. Let's run this in. And what we're going to do at the end of this is show the actual gear lever in action. I'm going to go for a ride and film the action of the gear lever and show you some observations in relation to it because it might not be for you and there is one reason for that um, which I'll explain shortly. Right so here we are now we have this situation now we've just got to get this angled correctly there's a little bit of a technique for getting that to line up just right there that's it. So what we'll do first is in fact get that top bolt lined up here and that will help hold everything else in the right place. So let's just not run that in fully, because what I'm going to do before I do is just make sure everything's lined up. There we go. Right, I'll put them on there more so now, because I'm close. Adding a bit of blue to these as well. Just a smidgen to run in with the uh, 
the threads to make sure that they're not going to come loose. I've also got a secret weapon for that shortly as well. But let's just push that home, start running them in. Run these bolts in. Right, that's not nipped too tight. I've just felt some resistance. You could, in fact, at this stage, just nip them up tight and be happy. But because I'm doing a video, and I'm a bit pedantic, I did a bit of research. We need to be 23 newton meters. So we've got the old, uh, well, actually it's new, torque wrench. Get me brain in a gear. So we're gonna use it. And that's it, that's all it needs. 23 newton meters. It's actually not too much. Yep, it bleeps, it get within 20% range and it starts bleeping did and then you get to the right. It stops bleeping, it just gives a constant bleep as opposed to an intermittent one. They are correct. Let's go back to the socket for the Allen bolts here. Run these in. Happy it is. Then we'll go back to this and we need to line that up with the splines on that. Now that will be anti-clockwise. Run it in, you're going to start seeing the gear lever moving up. With that in mind, now what I'm going to do is make sure I get it somewhat light level to start with. Obviously you can adjust that to your own boots, etc. in your own fitment. 11 mil top. Do the same on here. Okay, that's it, fitted. Now, we're gonna take it for a spin. I'll get the camera on it. And during the ride, I'm gonna give you a couple of observations about the product itself. Then you can make a decision on whether you think it's right for you. Let's go. All right, so I rode into work 12 hours ago and it was dark, so I couldn't really video anything. My first impressions on the commute into work this morning, they weren't really that positive. I couldn't get the hang of it. I was not happy. It wasn't smooth. I couldn't get gears. I couldn't go from fifth to sixth. And a lot of it, I think, I'm hoping it's muscle memory. And the reason it's different is it's an inch longer is this if you look at this diagram here and the photographs you can see that it's actually an inch longer so I've got 24,000 kilometers worth of muscle memory to overcome if I'm gonna start changing gear back and forth I've got to find it um, it's very very different um, the other thing is, if you look at that adjustment, that's as far back as it'll go on this second picture. Look, it's not quite going back as far as you'd expect. You'd look at that, you'd think it'd go back a bit further, but it actually doesn't. And it's one of them things where, is that by design? I don't know. It should be perfect. And I'm thinking that is possibly by design. They might have a reason for it. But anyway, I think what will happen is I'll have to do another review on this in another couple of months and tell you what I feel about it. It's different and you'd expect that. So I'm happy with it. Is the product nice? Actually, nice CNC. There's a reason it's called nice CNC. It's beautiful stuff. I think it's going to be strong enough. I think it's certainly got a quality feel and build and it belies the cost because that's what I'm going to go to now um, I think Australian around about $60 American I'd have to check it's about $35 British pounds I think you're looking at about 30 quid 
you can go to the website click top right hand corner you can change your country code and get your prices but that is not a lot of money you could actually get it and be happy with that completely and if you don't like it down the line you've only lost a small amount of money generally um, it's, I'm having to be really precise and I'm, I think it might be better when I'm stood up I'm thinking Oh, is that better? Yeah, possibly. I'm getting the hang of it now. I didn't like it this morning. But I'm thinking that's a little bit better. Right, and one more thing, the most important thing. RG10, Romeo Golf. RG for Rider Guider 10. Stick that in your discount box and you will get 10% discount so that makes that Australian what 55 dollars say 3 quid UK not bad it's better than a pork in the eye it'll buy you a coffee yeah look I'm getting the hang of it it's better than it was this morning I think it is just out of muscle memory now and it's coming yeah, it is getting better. I reckon it's going to suit me, but first impressions weren't good, but it is getting better. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget your discount code, RG10, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.